The campfire crackled, spitting sparks into the night. A low hum vibrated in the air, a constant presence. It seemed to emanate from the cave, a gaping maw in the base of the hill. We called it the Whispering Cave, a name whispered amongst us kids, never spoken aloud. You won't go in there, will you? My best friend Liam, his voice a shaky murmur. He knew I was crazy enough to try. I could see the fear in his eyes but also a morbid fascination. I scoffed, trying to mask the tremor in my own heart. Of course not, I lied, tossing another twig onto the fire. The flames flared, momentarily pushing back the shadows that danced at the edge of our campsite. The humming intensified, a discordant symphony that sent chills down my spine. For weeks the cave had beckoned me, its darkness whispering promises of adventure and terror. Tonight, under the pale glow of the almost full moon, I felt an undeniable pull. I wouldn't admit it, not even to myself, but the fear was part of the allure. Double, triple dare you, Liam said, breaking the silence. He wouldn't meet my eyes. He was playing our unspoken game, the one where I pretended to be fearless and he pretended not to be scared. I knew what he was doing. Daring me was his way of living vicariously through my stupidity. You think you're funny, right? I retorted, my voice a forced growl. Liam just shrugged, a smirk playing on his lips. Just saying, some people think they're brave, some people actually are. He threw a handful of dry leaves into the fire, sending sparks swirling into the air like a thousand fireflies. I glared at him, knowing I was caught in his trap. The humming from the cave intensified, a throbbing pulse that resonated in my teeth. Fine, I would go. Not for him, but to silence the whispers that beckoned me closer to the darkness. With a deep breath, I stood up and grabbed a flickering branch from the fire, its light a meager weapon against the encroaching darkness. Fine, I said, trying to sound nonchalant, but if I disappear you're explaining it to my mom. Liam's face paled. Just be careful, alright? His voice was barely audible. I didn't answer. Turning my back on him, and the safety of the fire, I walked towards the gaping maw of the cave. The humming intensified with each step, until it felt like a physical pressure against my eardrums. The air grew colder, the smell of damp earth and something else, metallic, filled my nostrils. The entrance was shrouded in shadow, the light from my makeshift torch swallowed by the darkness. I hesitated for a moment, fear a cold fist around my heart. What was I doing? This was stupid, reckless, dangerous. Then I heard it, a scraping sound like metal dragging against stone, echoed from the depths of the cave. My blood ran cold, it definitely wasn't an animal. Curiosity warred with terror, and curiosity as always won. Taking a deep breath I stepped into the cave. The darkness pressed in around me, thick and suffocating. I felt along the damp, rough wall, my heart pounding against my ribs like a drum. The passage narrowed, the air growing colder and more oppressive. The scraping sound came at irregular intervals now, seeming to come from deeper within the cave. I pushed onward, the fear a living thing now, coiling around my throat, making it hard to breathe. Then a glimmer of light appeared in the distance. Hope, fragile and flickering, bloomed in my chest. I stumbled towards it, my hand brushing against something slick and cold. I recoiled, my skin crawling, what was that? The light grew brighter, revealing a wider chamber ahead. The scraping sound was louder now, accompanied by a low guttural growl that sent shivers down my spine. I froze, my hand tightening around the burning branch, its light a tiny beacon in the overwhelming darkness. Cautiously I crept forward, my heart pounding in my ears. The chamber was larger than I expected, the walls adorned with strange markings, ancient symbols etched into the rock. They seemed to writhe and contort in the flickering light of my torch, taking on grotesque shapes that sent shivers down my spine. In the center of the chamber something glinted, a metallic sheen reflecting the light. As I drew closer the scraping sound intensified, and I could hear the sound of heavy breathing, ragged and uneven. My hand trembled, the branch threatening to fall from my grasp. What was I about to unearth? 
I took a step closer, my eyes straining to see through the gloom. The air hung heavy with the metallic scent from before, now overpowering, making my stomach churn. The breathing grew louder, closer and I realized with a jolt of terror, it wasn't breathing, it was growling. Then I saw it. A hulking shape crouched low to the ground, its back to me. The metallic glint was a chain, thick and rusted, shackled to its ankle. The creature, if that's what it was, moved with a slow, deliberate grace that belied its size. It turned its head slowly, and I saw a flash of yellow eyes burning with a malevolent intelligence. A low growl rumbled in its chest and I felt a primal fear, the instinctive terror of prey facing predator, course through my veins. I stumbled back, my foot catching on a loose rock. I fell, the burning branch flying from my grasp, its light extinguished in an instant. Darkness descended, absolute and suffocating. I scrambled back, my hands searching for purchase on the slick, uneven ground. Section 8, Facing the Unknown. The growling was closer now, accompanied by the clatter of the chain as the creature moved towards me. Panic welled up, threatening to choke me. I was trapped, alone in the darkness with, what, what was this thing? Liam! I screamed, my voice hoarse and thin in the oppressive silence. Help me! My voice echoed through the chamber swallowed by the darkness. There was no answer but the steady approach of the creature. I could hear its ragged breathing, smell the rank odor of decay that clung to it. It was close now, close enough to touch. I scrambled back, my hand closing around something hard and cold. A rock. I hefted it in my hand, my only weapon against the unknown terror that stalked me. Section 9. A desperate escape. Then a flicker of light pierced the darkness. Liam. He was at the entrance of the chamber, a flashlight clutched in his hand, its beam dancing across the walls. The creature hesitated, momentarily blinded by the sudden intrusion. Liam, run! I screamed, my voice cracking with terror. But Liam, bless his foolish brave heart, didn't run. He pointed the flashlight beam directly at the creature, momentarily blinding it. Come on, let's go, he yelled, his voice high with fear. I didn't hesitate. Scrambling to my feet, I ran towards the light, my heart pounding against my ribs. The creature roared, a sound of pure fury, and I heard the clatter of the chain as it lunged. Section 10, Trapped. We sprinted through the darkness, Liam's flashlight beam our only guide. The passage seemed to stretch on forever, the air thick and heavy. The scraping sound of the chain echoed behind us, relentless, terrifying. We burst out of the cave entrance, collapsing onto the soft earth, gasping for breath. The cool night air never felt so good. We lay there for a moment, our chests heaving, the sound of our own ragged breaths the only sound in the stillness. Then Liam spoke, his voice a shaky whisper. What? What was that thing? I shook my head, my throat too dry to speak. I didn't know, but I knew one thing. I would never forget the sound of its growls, the glint of its eyes, the feeling of its hot, fetid breath on my neck. We stumbled back to the campfire, the dying embers casting long, eerie shadows. Liam rebuilt the fire, the flames a welcome beacon of safety in the darkness. We sat in silence, the events of the last hour replaying in our minds. Section 11. The Haunting Truth We never spoke of what we saw that night, but the experience changed us, marked us in ways we couldn't explain. We avoided the cave, the whispering darkness holding a new terror, and sometimes in the dead of night, I would hear the scrape of metal against stone and wake up in a cold sweat, the echo of a growl still ringing in my ears. One day, weeks later, I found Liam poring over old books in the library. Listen to this, he said, his voice low and urgent. He read aloud from a faded manuscript. Legend tells of a creature bound to the earth by a magical chain, a creature of darkness driven by an insatiable hunger. I knew before he finished. We had stumbled upon something ancient and evil, something that should have remained buried in the darkness of the cave. And in that moment, I knew with chilling certainty, the creature was still out there, bound, but not broken. And it would never forget those who had dared to enter its domain.